Hi there, this tutorial is going to be about media queries. Now media queries are sections of CSS that determine the layout and style of your website for different device sizes like mobile, tablet and desktop, as well as a variety of other output, say like what happens to your site when it gets printed. Now Dreamweaver has features that make adding and updating media queries super easy. Let's go look at those. Now I'm working in standard view and I'm also working in live view because what I want to show you is this option here. It's called the media query bar. This is a visual representation of the media queries that are in my CSS code. And watch this, I can click on these and it resizes my site based on these media queries to see what the site looks like at the different views. If for some reason you can't see it, it's this little option here on the left. And when you want it to stop lining up with the media queries, you can just double click this gray area here on the right. So at the moment we're previewing it within Dreamweaver, within Live View, which is great. But if you want to work within a browser, you can use the real-time browser preview by clicking this icon in the bottom right here. And it allows me to preview my responsive media queries live in a browser or on any of my devices. So I can see and interact with them in real time. Now there is another tutorial on setting up real-time browser preview, so go and check that out. Now let's look at the code that is used to create a media query. I'm gonna to switch to Split View and then jump to my styles.css. So I'm gonna scroll down the bottom here of my existing site. And you can see down here, this is what a media query looks like. They always start with an at media. And you can see here my three different views with the different screen widths. And all that happens with a media query is that when a browser opens your website, it looks to see how wide the browser is. And if it's opening up on say a tablet, it's gonna trigger all of the CSS that is inside this media query. See this little arrow here, if I twirl it down, this is the code that gets triggered and displayed on our tablet device. It's the same here for these larger media queries, maybe desktop and really large displays. So let me open up my CSS designers panel. Okay, it's under window CSS designer. Now this sources window here shows the linked and any internal style sheets that are associated with this web page. In this example, we just have one, the styles.css. I'll click on that. Now down here where it says at media, now I can click on any of these media queries. And you can see there that the selectors down the bottom keep changing depending on which one I have selected. The selectors section is all the selectors that are defined within the media query I have selected here. Now these are all the media queries defined in this site, including the global styles for this page. Now the global styles are the foundation for the entire site. And these three here are media queries that override the global when it gets to these different views. Now global in our case means the mobile device because we've designed the site with our mobile first approach, which means the first style and layout that we did for this site was done for a mobile device or at least a browser that is less than 768 pixels wide. And as the site gets past that number, these selectors come into play to make it look good on tablet and larger desktop sizes. Okay, so let's go and make an amend to our media query. First thing you need to do is make sure you've got our styles.css selected. And what we want to do is I want to adjust this title here, which uses a selector called hero title. Okay, but I only want to adjust this size here, the 992, which is my traditional desktop. Say I want to make it bigger just for this media query. So what you do is you click on the media query here, and down the bottom here, there's my hero title. And what you would have noticed there is that in my styles.css code, okay, it's jumped to the line. So I can start editing this in code view if I prefer. But you can see over here in my CSS design panel, it's jumped to it and it's given me all the properties that are listed in the selector. In my case, this one is the font size I wanna change. I'm gonna click hold and just drag it. Okay, I've made mine far too big, I know, but for this example, what it's gonna allow me to show you is, I'm gonna just tidy in this panel. Okay, so we can see all the different media queries. So at the really large size, okay, you can see it's still fine, it's an appropriate size. Down here at tablet, it's still fine. Okay, and down here, anywhere lower than that, okay, I'm dragging this bar here in mobile, it looks fine. But at the media query that we were working at, 992, you can see it's really, really big. Now, an alternative way of working without the CSS designer panel is you can simply click on the element you want to adjust. Okay, and you can see here is my hero title that I'm working on. I can right click it, go to code, and it's displaying the hero title as it is in global, okay, which is the top one. The next one down here is in my media query there, seven, six, eight pixels. This next one down is the one we just worked on, 992, and there's the really large one. And all you need to do is figure out which one you wanna work on. I'm gonna click on this guy, and it jumps to that line that controls it in the code down the bottom. So I can go down here and manually adjust it. Maybe put it back to eight. Now in this example, we have a page that doesn't have any media queries. So let's look at adding them through the CSS designer panel. 
First thing you need to do is ensure you've got the CSS sheet that you want the styles to go into, in our case, styles.css. Then under media, we're gonna hit the plus button. Now each of these conditions from the dropdown have additional settings. Media here has the option to indicate the output of your design, such as whether it would be output to a screen or it's gonna be formatted for print. You can see this is the code to make that happen. This orientation query here will look to see whether the device is in landscape or portrait mode. There's another one here for resolution, for high resolution displays, say maybe 144. You can see the code gets generated for you down the bottom here. What we wanna do is add a media query for our responsive design. So we're gonna pick something called min width. We're gonna set it to 768. Now the units are defined as pixels, but there are lots of other measurement options in there. I could also add multiple conditions here by adding this plus symbol. I could set it to a max width of say 991. You can see down here it shows the and statement, meaning that both of these numbers need to be true for this to work. So not what I want for this one. I'm going to delete the second one by clicking the minus here. Let's click OK. And you can see the media query appears here in the CSS designer panel. It's also up here in my media query bar. And because we've used the minimum width, we have these little helpful arrows showing us that the media query gets triggered from this minimum number all the way to the right until I get to my next media query. It's also a helpful purple color, which always denotes the minimum width. Check out this other separate project I'm working on here, just to show you that if I choose to use the max width, it's colored green, and the min and max together are easy to see because they are colored a helpful blue. Let's jump back to our project. Now the third place our media query appears, if I scroll down here to the bottom of my styles.css, there's my media query here down the bottom of my code. So let's go and add some code to this media query. I'm gonna put a couple of returns in between the curly braces there. I'm gonna put paste, I've got one that I've already made earlier. Okay, and this selector, okay, this class selector affects this exhibition type here at the top and plays around with the font and the spacing. Okay, and what's happened here is, see along the top here, there's my media query. Okay, so that's the one that I just made in my CSS designer panel appearing. And what happens is if I drag this sidebar here, Remember we designed mobile first, which means I designed it all like this, okay, to look exactly like this, but when it gets to my media query, I'm overriding, okay, that style, okay, the hero lead-in, and watch, bam, it gets bigger, okay, and more appropriate for my tablet size. And that, my friends, is how media queries work. So we created this media query here using the CSS designer panel. Okay, I'm gonna close that down or at least collapse it down now just so I can see a bit more because we're gonna use this media query bar to create the next one. It doesn't matter which way you like to create them. This is a more visual way. So it doesn't really matter where this is, okay? But you can see this little plus button here. I'm gonna click plus. It's picked a max width and it's picked a number for where the slide bar was. But what I want is I'm gonna use the min width, okay, like we did earlier and I'm gonna use 992. Okay, and where it says create new style sheet, I'm gonna put it in the one I've got existing, styles.css, and click OK. It doesn't matter whether you wanna use it that way or use the CSS designer panel, the same thing happens. You can see down the bottom of my code here, I have my min width. Now I'm gonna add a select I've already made. You could use your CSS designer panel, it's no problem. Okay, but I'm gonna paste this one in, and it's affecting the same class. Hero lead in, but it's only being triggered when it's a minimum of 992 or above. So you can see up here, I've got my mobile version, then it changes here when I get to my next media query, and then across 992, it changes again. Or you can click on these to jump between media queries. So that's gonna be the end of our media query video. If you want to download the code that gets used in this video, okay, there'll be a link on the page here. So I hope that showed you how the live view at the top here, the code down the bottom here, and the CSS designer panel all tie together to make quick, easy media queries for your responsive websites. That's gonna be it for this one. Remember there are lots of other Dreamweaver tutorials here, so check those out as well.